Hello, my beautiful writers. I am so excited to do this workshop with you all, um, spending the next four weeks together exploring various types of spiritual narratives and trying them ourselves and seeing what we come up with and sharing them with one another. Um, this week we're going to focus on the quest narrative, and it is the first sort of um, iteration of the spiritual narrative writing that we're going to look at. Um, all spiritual writing, I mean, it's as old as human consciousness, but it usually centers on a protagonist having a turning point, a moment in time where they are enlightened and they start going in a different direction. Um, and so, if, you know, whatever we cover, this workshop, um, sort of the heart of everything that we cover, and no matter what form of spiritual narrative we're writing, there's always going to be this aha moment, this moment that is sort of pivotal for you, the narrator, the protagonist in the writing, uh, that's going to subtly or drastically alter the trajectory of the journey that you're on. This aha moment, this moment of insight can be huge. It can have reverberations that are massive. It can happen suddenly, or it can be small and subtle and still have reverberations that are very um, dramatic for the protagonist. Um, so this week we're focusing on the quest narrative. And at its core, the quest um, narrative is a journey. Uh, in a quest narrative, you, the narrator, the protagonist, are starting out headed towards an undefined destination. Along the way, you hit obstacles, you hit guides, but by the time you end up at the fi finished point, you are transformed, you are changed. And um, I think The Wizard of Oz is a classic quest narrative. I also think of Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Eat, Pray, Love. She is on this journey, this quest, um, towards an undefined destination. She doesn't know where she's going, but she knows she needs something. She has these burning questions about herself and the world around her, um, her spirituality, her, the way that she engages relationships. These questions are propelling her forward, and by the end of the book, she is a fundamentally different person. She's changed um, in the way that she's approaching herself and those around her versus the beginning of the book. So in the handout this week, I gave you two writing prompts to look at. Pick one of those two, spend the week free writing, and then we will post those by Monday, a week from today, um, at midnight. And then you all will be in reading, and I will assign reading partners to you, so you only have to read one or two people for the week. Give each other feedback, and then we will do it all over again uh, for the following week. Um, in the handout on the second page, I've given you some rules for free writing to help sort of give you a guideline as you start working on generating writing. What we're posting to one another does not need to be polished, does not need to be perfect. It needs to be honest and it needs to follow the heat. It needs to follow what is necessary and it needs to tell the truth. It doesn't need to be polished and perfect and beautiful. So I've given you guidelines there on how to sort of establish this writing practice to follow the heat, to follow the energy, and also how to give each other feedback uh, when that time comes. So later on this week I'll post your reading partners so you'll know who you need to read for the next week. This week I want you just to focus on your writing prompts and actually generating the writing and getting it done. If you have any questions for me, let me know. Um, I'm here to help, here to answer those questions, and I look forward to seeing you in the workshop.